Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to another video. Welcome back for another video for Interview with the Vampire Season 2, Episode 3, titled No Pain. Um, so I welcome you to another video using my brand new camera, seeing how that works out, and slowly upgrading my equipment as I go along. I know here on the channel lately, it's been kind of slow. I mean, after The Ones Who Live wrapped up and all the excitement around that show kind of dying down, the content on my end has not been as, you know, as much as I would like it to be as far as producing it and whatnot, but also just adult life gets in the way, uh, taking care of the kids, summer's revved up, so I got that going for me now too. But also being in the summertime when a lot of our shows are on hiatus, and uh, as far as Walking Dead's concerned, you know, we got Daryl Dixon season two coming at some point. We don't know when, we don't know as far as... You know, when that's going to happen, we don't have any time date or time frame as far as a trailer or premiere or anything in sight. The premiere is going to be a early thing at the Tribeca Film Festival, which is going on here in a couple weeks. And as far as after that, when it's going to be released to the public, we have no idea. So that's kind of a bummer that we don't know what's going on there. And you know, it, with Dead City also being kind of on a delayed schedule with the recording and whatnot um we're just kind of lying in wait for what could be next for walking dead beyond these two shows because we just don't know but anyways let's jump into the review for season two episode three of interview with the vampire which was another great episode we got a lot more backstory on the history of lestat and Ar armand which was uh interesting to say the least because that is where the familiarity on my end with this particular story ends. I only know anything up until where we lose Claudia and everything that kind of goes on with the the theater of vampires and whatnot. But uh, beyond that, I don't know anything much about the story. So it was nice to get some history on where Lestat comes into play as far as how Armand knows him, how he is, has anything to do with the theater. Well, uh, beyond that, he is the one who started the theater. And Armand comes across him, and up until this point, Armand has his own little coven of vampires, and they are living in the sewers. They are living in secrets. They, you know, feed when they can and whatnot. But beyond that, they don't really go out into the world. They keep their existence very secret until they learn of Lestat and his just his pompous and outright doing what he wants attitude as far as vampires are concerned. Because one of their five rules, which is to keep secrets, but Lestat breaks those rules he doesn't care and this is what kind of gets the i guess the uh, intrigue or the interest in lestat in the first place so armand goes to seek out him and get him to understand you can't be a vampire and do the things that you do you cannot be out there out in the open you cannot associate with mortals any mortals that know of what you really are are supposed to die soon after but he actually takes on a mortal as a lover. And so Armand confronts him about this, that you're not supposed to associate with humans beyond that they are a meal, nothing more, or slaves or something like that. This is where we get some background on them, how they meet, how their relationship develops, and how Lestat is basically solely responsible for starting this theater, getting Armand and his Covenant Vampires where they are, where they're killing in plain sight, and no one is the wiser. They think it's part of the show. And we kind of get some more on the stat. We don't get anything present day of him as of yet. And I'm not sure if we will. We get just the history of how he plays into Armand and Louis' story. And so we're getting this background. And we find out the stats is, you know, as we suspected, he's a very self-serving individual. He is all about him. He says that he's in love with Armand. They have a short-lived relationship. And then he just disappears. And it's a good century or so before Armand even approaches the idea of caring for someone on that level again. He just carries on developing the uh, vampire theater and doing their business, killing in plain view of everybody, and just making people believe that it's all make-believe, that it is not real, that they are not real vampires. And you know, we get more played into that, and then we finally get back to where we are learning about Claudia and Louis' uh, 
involvement in the theater and just seeing how excited Claudia is to be amongst her own kind, but Louis is very hesitant. He sees that they could find out what they did at any time and they would pay for lying. And so it's uh, Louis, he's very tiptoeing around this and he's trying to avoid any detection as far as revealing what they did, but Armand forming this relationship with him, he sees that he's not being truthful with him and he eventually gets Louis to break, confessing that they did kill Lestat, or what they believe anyways, and that he had it coming, you know, on all grounds or whatever. And so this is yet again one of their rules. You're not supposed to kill any of your own kind, and especially you're not supposed to lie about it. And so they come to terms. They He opens up to Armand, but it is here where... Because he's so hesitant to actually become one of the Coven members, because Claudia has since become a member, she earns her way up into the play. But I think the next episode, especially as we get up to the climax of uh, Claudia's story, she is going to find that it's not everything that she would hoped it would be. And so Louis being standoffish and everything makes all the other vampires very suspicious, and it kind of goes along with one of the guidelines or rules that they are not supposed to be known about and whatnot, even if it's by another vampire. So they task Armand, being the leader and all, that he is supposed to kill Louis, but of course he doesn't. He lets him go. And so now we're left waiting. What's going to happen as a repercussion for Armand not doing that? I have a pretty good idea. But it's all just been an exciting development of story. I'm hoping that we do see some present-day Lestat. I'm not sure if we will. If we do, it probably won't be until the last couple of episodes, and I think there is only six to eight episodes because the way the shows, a lot of shows these days, they don't draw it out past that many. The max anymore is about 13 episodes for a show, but with these particular shows, I think we're only up to six to eight episodes. I'm not 100% sure, but um, it's... You know, it's an interesting story. I'm excited to see how it goes on, bringing me more information that I'm not familiar with, seeing where the story plays out, and just seeing how it's all going to come to a head. Because another big revelation in this particular episode is that people that are familiar or realize or whatever that vampires are very real and they've been tracking their movements for quite some time. They're an organization much similar to the Men in Black in a sense, where they find their way to David, and they hack their way onto his computer, giving him all these files and all the history of what they know about this coven of vampires within this theater, and so they're letting him know that they know, and they're there if he has any questions or whatnot, but it's all very suspicious, and you know it could lead up to something very dramatic in the end, but uh, David's trying to hide this as well, because Nobody is supposed to know, like I said, that's kind of one of their main things. No one's supposed to know that vampires are real. And so we're waiting to see what happens with that. If they do, in fact, go after him or some big thing happens where we see a lot of death. Maybe we see David die. I'm not 100% sure about that one. But just there is something else kind of brewing in the background, and I'm ready to see it. I'm excited to see how that pops up because this information that this organization is providing is lists of potential victims, lists of activity, lists of members of the coven and the people that made them and all this. So it's a collection of history about what David is trying to understand about the story that he's trying to get from Louis and Armand about Claudia, how things went south with her and the things that happened to her. So it's very exciting. I'm ready to see what else this story brings and just see how it's how it develops. I'm ready to see how just how it ends for the most part. I'm excited for it, but it's been a very good series up until now, so I imagine the rest of it is going to be just as good. But anyways, if you enjoyed the review, please leave a like, leave a comment, and of course subscribe to the channel. I'd really appreciate it. And uh, I guess that'll do it, guys. So until next time, take care. Bye.